In this lecture, we'll talk about mining data streams. And as you can see, this is actually the start of a new series of topics where we'll talk about how to do data mining and machine learning with an unlimited stream of data. So in many data mining situations, we actually do not know the entire data set in advance. So in this case, the data is actually an unlimited stream coming from the user side. And this is actually a different setting from uh, what we have discussed before, where we have a, a fixed data set to work with. And therefore the stream management here is important when the input ray is controlled externally in this case. And for example, in terms of the Google queries, the input rate of the Google queries actually is controlled by, by the users, not Google itself. And similarly for Twitter and, and Facebook status updates, the data stream is actually controlled by the Twitter or Facebook users, but not the Twitter or Facebook, the company themselves. So we can think of the data as infinite and non-stationary here. And here non-stationary means that distribution actually can change over time. Now in the string model, we will talk about uh, today, the input elements enter at a rapid rate and it will enter at one or more input ports. So basically, if it's element coming to uh, one port and it's one stream, and if it's coming to multiple ports, then it's multiple data streams at the same time. And we call these elements of the stream tuples. And the system obviously cannot store the entire stream accessibly. So the question is, how do we make uh, critical calculations about the unlimited stream using a limited amount of data? As a side note, remember that in the previous lecture, we actually talked about how to use SGD to, to learn SVM in an online setting. So actually, SGD is already an example of a stream algorithm. And in machine learning, we call this online learning, right? And online learning allows for modeling problems where we have a continuous stream of data. And basically in online learning, we want an algorithm to learn from it, learn from the stream of data and slowly adapt to the changes in the data. And the idea we had in the previous lecture was to do slow updates to the model. So basically we use SGD to make small updates for the SVM or latent factor model. So concretely, we will first train the S SVM uh, classifier on the training data. And then for every example from the string, we will slightly update the model using very small learning rate. Now let's go back to our streaming setting in this lecture. So in a general stream processing model, we're gonna have streams of data here coming from the users. So here each line is a stream is a data stream comprised, composed of uh, uh, elements or tuples. And we also have a processor to process all these data streams. And pro to process the data stream, uh, we also need a limited working storage. Basically, this is like the mem memory the processor needs to use when it runs the processing algorithm. And it also needs a archival storage. So this is like the disk space, uh, the processor needs to store some external data. And at the same time, there will be some uh, queries coming from the user. So the processor will process this query and, and return the results as the output. And this is the general stream processing model for the setting. Now, here let's briefly talk about uh, several types of queries. One may want to answer on the data stream. 
Specifically on the first half of this lecture, we'll talk about queries about sampling data from a stream. So basically in here, the goal is just to construct a random sample of the data stream. And ideally we want this random sample to be unbiased. And uh, another type of queries may involve queries over a sliding window or sliding windows. And for example, the goal may be to answer questions like what is the number of items of type X in the last K elements of the data stream? And other types of queries include some, some queries about filtering a data stream. For example, you may try to answer questions like uh, how to select elements with property X from the stream. So this is a filtering problem. Or it can be queries about counting distinct elements. So to, this is to answer questions like, uh, what's the number of distinct elements in the last K elements of the, of the stream? It can also be queries about estimating moments. For example, we might want to estimate the average or standard deviation of the last K elements in the data stream. Or it can also be queries about how to find frequent, uh, frequent elements. And all these queries, you may have noticed that it's actually very, very relevant to a lot of real world data sets and real world problems. And we can see that stream mining algorithms actually do have a lot of applications. For example, one application is about mining query streams. For example, Google may want to know what queries are more frequent today than yesterday. So this is more like uh, what's the trending topic today. And therefore the algorithm may want to set a window size to one day and will just count the frequency of the queries and answer the questions. And another application is maybe about mining click stream. For example, Yahoo may want to know which of its pages are getting the unusual number of hits in the past hour. Or an application may be about mining social network news feeds, for example, to look for trending topics on Twitter or Facebook. And in sensor networks, many sensors actually are feeding into a central controller. So it might be helpful to use a stream mining algorithm to summarize all these sensor readings. And another application may be uh, about a telephone, telephone call record, right? Because data can feed into customer bills as well as settlements between uh, telephone companies. It might be interesting to perform data mining on these records to find interesting patterns. And another application may be that in terms of IP packets, monitor at a switch then it might be helpful to use stream mining algorithm to gather information for optimal routing or to detect denial of service attacks from these packets. 